Stephen Jane Messianics. I'm uh, multitasking a little bit today, and you're going to be multitasking with me. I'm about halfway done with my dishes because I had a couple of takes already. But this is two husbands, Messianic or Christian husbands, whatever you, um, whatever you call yourself. And uh, you know, if you're not faithful to God, or you're single, or you just, you probably find this very boring. Even the married guys probably find this a little boring. But I'm just going to go through a few scriptures with you and just give you my take on it. I'm not a great teacher. I'm not a prophet. I never claim to be. Um, I kind of laugh at people who think I'm, you know, putting on airs or anything. Believe me, uh, I'm not here for entertainment. I'm, I'm just doing this to encourage people. But if you're a husband, I need you to listen to this. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 and start at verse 7. Now, don't think I'm going to be like telling wives to be the slaves of their husband or anything. Don't be afraid. You husbands, likewise, conduct your married lives with understanding. So right there, come on. That's a scripture. With understanding. Although your wife may be weaker physically, it's not always the case, you should respect her as a fellow heir of the gift of life. If you don't, your prayers will be blocked. That's verse 7 in the CJB. Finally, all of you, and this is also to husbands and everybody who believes, be of one, be one in mind and feeling and love as brothers and be compassionate and humble-minded, not repaying evil with evil or insult with insult, but on the contrary, with blessing. So, husbands, if you're... Uh, in a situation with your wife or somebody, and I'm very blessed, my woman's a blessed angel, uh, and you find yourselves repaying evil with evil and insult with insult, you need to stop and, and bless them. Bless, 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 bless. Some great advice. Huh? Good preaching. And then he goes on to quote the, the uh, psalm, Psalm 34. Whoever wants to love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. So don't lie to your wives. Don't deceive them. Tell them the truth. Be transparent. This is just straight truth. I've been married 13 years to a good woman. And I was an atheist and I was a wild man. I'm just telling y'all. Listen to me. Turn from evil and do good. Psalm 34. Seek peace and chase after it. How many husbands? How many of you are doing that? For Adonai keeps his eyes on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. Remember, if you are uh, not treating your wife as an equal heir to salvation, then your prayers are blocked. So he said his, the ears, his ears are open to their prayers, but his face is against those who do evil things. Now, Proverbs 18.22. He who finds a wife finds a great good. He has won the favor of Adonai. So men, if you're married... If you're married, you you have God's favor. You have the favor of Adonai. That's that's what it says. Proverbs eighteen twenty two. It's simple as that. It's it's straight. It's one of those direct things that you kind of hope everything is like in the Bible, but it's not all. It's not always. So, be thankful. Be thankful. Oh my goodness! Oh, what's going on over here? Well, let's go to Ephesians chapter five, knowing that you. As a husband, have Adonai's favor. You do. Believe me. Chapter 5, 21. Now, listen to this. And listen to the language, because we always hear, wives, submit to the husband. Submit to the husband. Husbands, rule over the wife. You always hear this. I've heard this so many times, and I, and I couldn't stand it. Because why would you want a woman who's just going to do everything you say and not going to be creative and not going to not going to be spontaneous and not going to challenge you why would you why would you want that why would anybody want that that's like in the, if you ever seen the movie coming to america not the best christian movie you know he was like making the he had his choice he had like this model he had like all these women dancing and he could make them jump he made the woman bark like a dog and jump on one foot he didn't like that he hated that so you know not the best example of a movie but so Ephesians 5.21. Now let's listen to the language here, okay? Submit one to another. I'm almost done too. Submit one to another in fear of the Messiah. 
Fear is also respect. Remember that. So you submit to each other. Husband and wife submit to each other. Wives should submit to their husbands as they do to the Lord. Because the husband is the head of the wife just as the Messiah, as head of the Messianic community, is himself the one who keeps the body safe. So, you, so if a woman is submitting to the husband, that just means she's saying, okay, you're going you're gonna to look out for me. You're going to protect me. I trust you. That doesn't mean the husband can order her around or treat her like a second-class citizen. That's wrong. Women give life. They're life givers. Every single person in this planet was born from a woman, even our Messiah. Um, just as the Messianic community submits to the Messiah, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Now listen. Keep listening. Everybody wants to just stop where they cherry pick where they want. Verse 25. As for husbands, love your wives, just as the Messiah loved the Messianic community. Whew. That's... That's a tall order. Again, goosebumps. Hope you are. In order to set it apart for God. Whew. I gotta hit pause here. <laughs> Making it clean through immersion in the mikvah, so to speak, in order to present the messianic community to himself as a bride to be proud of. Whew. Without a spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but holy and without defect. This is how husbands ought to love their wives like their own bodies, for the man who loves his wife is loving himself. Why, no one ever hated his own flesh. <coughs> On the contrary, he feeds it well and takes care of it, just as the Messiah does the Messianic community, because we are parts of his body. Therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and remain with his wife, and the two will become one. There is profound truth hidden here, which I say which I say concerns the Messiah and the Messianic community. However, the text also applies to each of you individually. Let each man love his wife as he does himself. Okay. <laughs> Stephen James, Messianics, coming at you live, channel seven. Yeah. So now think of this, right? So your husbands, you're supposed to love your wives just as the Messiah loved the Messianic community. So did Jesus, Yeshua, did he, did he serve his people? Did he serve the Messianic community? He, he, you could say he submitted. Remember, even, even to, 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 to Gentiles, just out of love. Remember he said I, to Pilate, I could... The only reason you could do this is because my Father in Heaven says you can do it. Um, you know, the, the, he lowered himself. I mean, he, he was tempted with everything. Everything that we suffered, he suffered, and worse. Uh, and you have to think, he, he did submit to his followers. Look, he served people who, you know, the religious uh, figurehead people... The people who had the respect of the community, the famous pastors, the famous leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, all these people, uh, not, not all who were bad, you know, um, those people, uh, you know, they said they had the authority of God. And they were saying, Yeshua, Jesus, you're, you're being, going around with these other people who are evil. They're like scum. And Yeshua was like, this, this is who I'm here for. And we as husbands have to submit to our wives. They have to submit to us. It says, husbands, love your wives just as the Messiah loved the Messianic community. You think women should be under your foot? What did, what did Yeshua do? He washed our feet. He washed our feet and got down. He stripped off his clothes. He got down and he washed our feet. God. Almighty, Son of God, Yeshua, the, the, the visible image of the invisible God, shall will call him, our Messiah, Yeshua. So, you have to sacrifice everything for your wife, man. 
I'm sorry, I get emotional, but I've been married 13 years. I'll tell you what, and you husbands, if you're a father, if you're a dad, if your wife gave you a child, two children, three children, if she had miscarriages, those are babies too. Those are lives that you will meet one day. New Year's life. Then she already sacrificed more for you and for God than you can ever imagine. So guys, remember, we are to love our wives as the Messiah loved, what they say usually in the other translations, the church. We have to sacrifice for them like he sacrificed for us. And he was not like an angry, mean Lord who asserted control. He served, he loved, he did what he had to be, what had to be done and more. He was the leader. So you are to be the leader, but that doesn't mean you're like, going to lord it over her everything that I'm reading in this I'm, I printed it out I was just reading it and um, nothing is inconsistent with that view that we are to submit to each other and women are to be treated with respect and love and equally and we're not to put our foot on a woman or try to lord it over her and you know Love changes how we see things, how our eyes, like through our eyes, like you ever heard the saying, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, beauty, beauty really, for us, it is in the eye of the beholder. And there, there are no people that are just straight. They're beautiful, you know. Number one, there's a part of us, because we're made in the image of God, you know, not to be like a pep talk like Joel Osteen or anything. Let's not get into that. But... Um, you know, we're all made in the image of God, so, that, so there is a part of us that is beautiful, that comes from Him. And beauty when, is something that's perceived by the person looking at it, so therefore it's variable to each person that's viewing it. It's, it's something that's perceived by the viewer, and it's therefore variable to each person that's, that's, that's beholding it. Um, and I, I, one thing I want to encourage, too, is... And discourage, you know, is, is when we look at uh, people's wives, different ages, all different races, whatever, you know, the husband that has the favor of Adonai by being married to that woman. And remember, you know, the paper, the piece of paper is one thing. Remember in the, in the Torah and everything, you know, when a man married a woman, it was like he just took her in his tent and then they were married, you know. So the one who, you were married to a woman, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You see something so special you remember in a second uh, kings chapter six when there was elisha and his servant and his servant was scared he didn't see you know what elisha saw with the, with the man of god who had faith and he opened his eyes and then he the servant could see like all these chariots and these armies you know there's something going on behind the scenes and uh that we we can't see but it's there it's the spiritual realm uh, and husbands we're always going to be under attack because we have God's favor we're married uh, Genesis 2 this was one of the first things that God God did but I just want to encourage you to remember that just we, we when you look at all these other people remember that you know when we see our wives it doesn't matter what you see if you see a, a person who's like who's big, small, gray hair, maybe losing hair, you know? We see like Elisha could see. We see true beauty with our wives. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or what any, anybody says to you about your wife. Um, you just dismiss it and ignore it. It means nothing. It's irrelevant. And don't, and don't, and don't let Satan, the, the enemy, have a foothold by having some kind of grudge, you know, because this is something I, you know, people, people gossip so much, you know, in every, every church, every congregation I've been in. But I just wanted to encourage you husbands today with these, uh, it was First Peter 3, 7, uh, and a couple verses after, and then Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. You've probably heard a dozen sermons on this, but this was just my little bit that I wanted to share with you uh, husbands. To not forget that we, we are to submit to each other, 21, in the fear 
521, fear the Messiah. And uh, that means we're to submit one to another. And the only way that your wife is su to submit to you is, is, is not like to be your, your, um, your slave or your, you know, to shut up and only speak when spoken to. Women are, are, are special, awesome people <laughs> that can do things that us men cannot do. And that's just the truth. So have respect for women. Check that out, Second Kings 6. It's really cool. That's how uh, faithful married men look at our women. Um, we see what you don't see, and, 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 and it's only our eyes, you know? Women always put themselves down, no matter what she looks like. Women, no matter if they're asking for a compliment, they want a compliment or anything. And uh, guys, always tell her that. Maybe read that story with her, Second Kings chapter 6, and just tell her. Like Elisha could see and nobody else could. Not to, not to say like, you know, you got to be careful how you word it. You know, women, they'll be looking for, you know, wait, what do you mean? You know, you know that you see her in a special light and that she's absolutely beautiful, more beautiful than anyone can ever imagine. And, and, uh, and that you have Adonai's favor by uh, being married with her and being married to her. So many blessings and shalom. Thank you so much. Uh, Pesach, Passover is coming up. Um, you know, we're not perfect. I remember there was comments. Somebody said they're not perfect. Believe me, we are not perfect either. You know, as a former atheist, I think of that letter that the, 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 the Messianic Jews in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, they were talking and they said, all these Gentiles are coming to faith. What do we do? And um, so they sent them this letter with like four things. And a lot of churches will say, you know, all of everything with Jewish people is done away with. We just need this little letter. That's the evidence. That's what you'll hear. A little twist of scriptures. And, um, you know, but I can understand somebody who didn't know God at all, totally lawless my whole life until I was 29. Um, I can understand that little letter, you know, them sending that. People like me, we don't know anything about God. <laughs> and uh, I've only been reading the uh, CJB since uh, October. So uh, I want to also encourage people, if you have some big theological questions, I'm probably not the best person to ask, though I will be sharing occasional things that I uncover and directing you to uh, scholarly sources like Dr. David Stern, uh, who rests in peace. So many blessings, like I said, shalom, that's enough out of me, but this was to husbands and I want to encourage you to serve your wife like the Messiah Yeshua served his people. He did not beat them up. He did not lord it over them. He did not do all this stuff commanding them everywhere and, and treating them poorly, without compassion, without love, and without peace. He washed their feet. So you should be kind to your wife. And if your wife gave you babies, she's sacrificed more than you can imagine. So you be there for her till the last breath and you keep this ring on your finger. You be buried with it. You have Adonai's favor, husbands. Don't, don't take that lightly. And stay in faith, please. Everything in this world is like designed to push us away from Adonai and Yeshua. And uh, the fact that you've watched this long or that you even have faith in Yeshua and you're even thinking about Messianic uh, Jews and this, stuff like this shows that you are on the sincere pursuit of truth. And uh, that's what it's all about. So bless you and uh, your house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will not treat my wife like she is, uh, um, you know, needs to ask permission to speak. That's ridiculous. That's abusive. And uh, that won't be tolerated in, in uh, the Messianic community. Uh, women are special and they're honored. They will be treated with respect and full equality. So many blessings and uh, love to you all. Thanks for watching and listening to me uh, wash dishes. It's been a busy week. See you next time. That's enough out of me.